Hello, hello, hello. This is Adrian Obi. I am a Capricorn Tigress of astrology, a look inside.com. And uh, let me fix my microphone here. I'm coming to you with the, uh, the monthly horoscope. Okay, do I have it there? Okay. <laughs> the monthly horoscope for the sign of Pisces. Pisces. Happy October to you, Pisces. So let's let's go through this because I really wanted to get get through the Pisces and a couple of others tonight. Okay, so Pisces. It's going to be an interesting month. I mean, Neptune is still retrograding in your first house. I do think that that some Pisces are still feeling some confusion. I really I I don't even know where to start. Um, but. I guess the one thing I want to say to Pisces is I'm so sorry for whatever you've gone through, but there's something that I, I think about, um, what is it about? Uh, there's without pressure, there's no diamonds without pressure. There's no diamonds. And, um, I think a lot of Pisces are turning into diamonds. Something rare, something ephemeral, something almost not of this world. It's because I feel like your spirits, your souls, I mean your divine spirit, you know what inside of you. I think Neptune has been healing that. A lot of you may have, um, oh, definitely. And during this month, a lot of you may have um, gotten either into religion or into uh, the metaphysical or, you know, even like following someone like me, which is astrology. I feel that. the Neptunian part of you, which, and then what I mean is the spiritual side of Neptune, the love principle of Neptune, the higher octave of Neptune is Venus. Right? And Venus is going to be in the ninth house. Uh, later in the month, I think after the 8th, let me just make sure I had that written down. Does Venus go into it? Yep, the 8th. The 8th of October. And Mercury is going to be in the ninth house as of the 3rd, the 3rd of October. And then the sun gets there on the 23rd of October. So the ninth house is going to have a lot of emphasis all of October. But you know, it might be a little hard to feel that because you might get overwhelmed with emotions. And the reason for that is, well, that Neptune and North Node, and there's going to be a, uh, some, you know, there's good, it's basically, there's going to be a lot of water. And so you can get lost in the emotion of the situation and then miss whatever lesson or spiritual reason that whatever it is is occurring is occurring. And I don't want you to miss that because uh, it's important, especially when you guys have Jupiter sitting up in the 10th house. That is more spirituality. In fact, that Jupiter in Sagittarius is naturally in the ninth house. Sagittarius is the natural ruler of the ninth house. So this whole ninth house spiritual thing is no joke. It is a real ever-present thing. But one of the things I also want you guys to think about, Pisces, is um, during the month up until, well, right now, today and tomorrow, um, on the, there's a, going to be a new moon coming on the 28th. Today is the 26th. So, uh, we got to, 
you know, a day and a half maybe for you guys. Um, and Venus and Mercury and Mars and the sun are still in uh, Libra right now. That Libra is in the eighth house, okay? And that, well, with the new moon there, it's, it's almost saying to kind of open up a little bit. You know, if you've been real quiet, holding it in, um, reach out to somebody. Open up a little bit. It's time. It's time to open up. I mean, Mars is there, and Mars is going to linger there even after the sun, well, at least after Mercury and Venus go uh, into Scorpio, Mars is going to linger in Libra a little longer. I think even, even after the sun. So that push toward um, purging, purging like... Um, I just want to say pain, but I mean, it, you know, it's Libra. So it's about balancing out what needs to be balanced out. That could be from a financial standpoint. That could be from a partnership standpoint. That could be from a deeply internal psychological standpoint and when I see that much emphasis in the eighth house I wouldn't be a good astrologer if I didn't say that it would be a great time to get professional therapy and not in a bad way I'm not saying that I'm just saying that there's no better time to go deep inside and start fixing whatever is broken because the time in Libra is the eighth house and then it's going to go into Scorpio which is the ruler of the eighth house I mean it's such an opportunity for Pisces to really reach an amazingly just a almost beautiful spiritual awakening and it starts now while the planets are in that eighth house. That's, I think that's when your mind will open to the deeper aspects of life. You'll see them. I think when Neptune is retrograde, and I've been talking about this with several signs, I think that when Mercury retrogrades, we just can see and I think also feel. Neptune's a very feely kind of planet. So I feel like we can see and feel. It's like we get this sense. It's like a sixth sense, right? We can find the solutions that we probably have not been able to find the whole time. That's the beauty of Neptune being at home in Pisces. A lot of people are developing uh, their psychic abilities, their spiritual consciousness. I mean, have you seen some of the people? There's like a wave of spiritual awakening occurring right now. And I had just uh, read that astrology is now uh, one of the number one businesses, growing businesses in the nation, which makes me feel proud that I am an astrologer. But amazing, amazing how the spiritual aspects of, you know, the universe are now in, you know, front and center. Who would have ever thought that? And I believe that it is because of that Jupiter being in uh, Sagittarius right now, and Neptune being in in uh, Pisces. They're both at home. They're both at home. And I think they're both exuding their highest light. Uh, both Jupiter and Neptune can be very light in nature. Um, almost like, a, I always feel like sprites or spirits, you know? And Neptune, especially, but when it's when it's uh, having that the square with uh, Jupiter, I think we just had the last, the third, final square between Neptune and Jupiter. I believe it was. But the creativity is extremely high right now, and so is spirituality. It's it's happening in a lot of people. 
And I think Pisces in particular are really opening up to spirituality right now. And it's a beautiful thing, you guys. Your eyes are being opened to like the mysteries of life. So I would keep a journal if I were you. I definitely, you know, um, write it down, deep dive into this because this is your time to do that. Um, the other thing is, well, I'm glad that I'm a Capricorn and I'm glad that I'm most likely in your house of friends or you're in my group or something like that because Saturn and Pluto are in your 11th house of friends. And it does show that your friends, I think, might be a sense of stability to you. I, Capricorn does sextile Pisces, so I think you can get a lot of stability out of that relationship with a Capricorn. Definitely. I think that'll definitely be so. Um, when uh, Pluto goes direct in uh, Capricorn on the 3rd of October, you're really going to feel that. And I, I mean, your friends... I think you'll have some very powerful friends, but your friends might also do some very powerful things for you. So that's actually a good thing. Uh, Chiron is in the second house. There's going to be a full moon in that second house on the 13th of October in Aries. So, you know, that full moon is going to be in your second house. That's called your money. Once again. full moon on the money. So, you know, thing is, it could make a wonderful trying with that Jupiter in your 10th house. So, you know, if you're a willer and giller and you're working on a deal right now, and I mean, with the North Node in your fifth house in Cancer, and, um, you know, it's making that square to that second house, but wow, that full moon is making an aspect to that Jupiter up in the 10th house. That is money all the way. Money, money. I mean, it, 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 it's, wow. The fifth house will almost urge you to take a gamble or a risk. Yeah, around them. The 12, 13, 14, you might gamble or risk. The only thing I don't want to see you gamble or risk with Pisces is, say, love or your children or romance or somebody who, who has your heart or you have their heart. Because the North Node is in the fifth house and it's asking you to be very compassionate this year with it being in Cancer and to be very understanding and nurturing and caring for your partner or even your children and your family and just those that um, you date and you know, you're romantic with. I just see that it's just a very caring, nurturing type of situation and not something that uh, would be negative, I don't think. Chiron, however, is in that second house with that full moon. And, you know, Chiron's the wounded healer and it is retrograde. So it could indicate some pain in the area of money. I really want you to be aware of this uh, because... Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of planets in that eighth house. So that could mean that other people are finally paying you the money that they owe you. And it could mean that a lot of people owe you money. And if they're not paying you the money, then that's not cool. But uh, with Chiron in the second house retrograding, I don't know of any healings going on. It could be that there is healing going on. So it may flip-flop. See what resonates most with you during this period. And if you find that you're making more money than you were, okay, that's what it is. Okay, it's healing it. So uh, one other thing is that Uranus in the third house, Pisces. Uranus in the third house. Uranus in the third house. So not only is Neptune in the first house retrograding, but Uranus is in the third house retrograding. And that is telling me that your communications could be like all over the place. People may not know what the heck you're talking about, child. So please be aware of this, okay? Please be aware that with Neptune, that you might be coming off a little otherworldly, a little nebulous, a little hard to pin down, a little hard to understand, a little what the heck, okay? That could be happening. 
And that could just be overall because you might be like a little cloak and dagger, especially after the 23rd when the sun goes into Scorpio. But with this Uranus in the third house, that's just like craziness and communications. That's crazy talk right there. I don't know what that is. Uh, be careful. You know, I hate to say be careful, but it is Uranus in the third house. So I have to say it. You know, it's Uranus in the third house is accidents. Does anyone know that? Am I supposed to say it? I don't like saying stuff like that because people don't like hearing that. But yes, Uranus in the third house is accident. So you guys be careful. Uranus is retrograde up until January. I don't know if that means it will be less accidents or it will be more. I guess we'll figure that out over time. Um, but it is accidents. The third house, local travel, especially in vehicles, bicycles, even walking in the community, um, in your neighborhoods, that type of thing. Be cautious. It's just sudden, unexplained things. It could be excitement. I mean, it could be a positive excitement. I mean, Taurus does try and uh, sextile Pisces. So, I mean, ugh. but be aware it's Uranus and it's sudden and it's inexplicable and it, it'll come out of nowhere and it'll embarrass you. And it'll, you know, it'll be something you weren't expecting and you're like, oh, God. yeah, Uranus in the third house of communication. And so just be aware of what you're saying and how you're speaking and how you're coming across to others. Because with Jupiter up in the 10th house, you can tend to be a little over exuberant right now. And, uh, you know, it's making a square to your ascendant. So it could be just all over the place and you don't realize it. I'm going to give you an analogy of that, what I'm talking about. Okay, so last night, or, and then I'm going to go. So last night I was watching like a Family Guy, Family Guy. And there was an episode, and I know a lot of you guys have seen this episode of Family Guy because it's not a new episode, right? And so Lois and Peter get like really tanked up on beer or weed. I think they took, uh, they were on... Lois and Peter do so much drugs, really. If you watch the show, it's crazy. So they had went, and it looks like they went up to this uh, talent show. And they, like, they had, at first they were singing with the guitar. And, and we kind of got to see it the way they saw it in their mind and, and high. And it sounded really good. Like, all the harmonies were great. And they were singing together. And it was beautiful, right? And so they were upset the next day. Like, why didn't we win? Why didn't we win that? We were so great. And then the son comes up and he's like, Chris says, well, Dad, Mom, I, I don't know if you were quite as good as you think you were. And so then he plays back. He plays back their performance. And it was like, ah! <laughs> I fall off every time I see that episode like oh my god how could they be that stone they had no clue they were just up there screaming in the microphone now I'm not saying you guys are gonna be bad bad Pisces like I'm not saying it's gonna be that bad I'm just saying you know make sure you're not just screaming in the microphone <laughs> You know, Neptune in the first house does that. They do that. And then it, Uranus in the third. I mean, anything could come out of your mouth. I just, what I don't want you to do, though, this is what I don't want you to do. It's like how Peter and Lois were acting before Chris showed them the video. They were getting mad, like, we're going to go down there and complain. And like they were starting to get angry about it that they didn't win. And then until Chris showed, let them hear that, I mean, they would have caused havoc. So what I don't want you to do is because, you know, Uranus is in Taurus. So I don't want you to get like stuck in your ways or stubborn and like, I was right. My, my idea was right. I said it right. I sang it right. I did it right. I did it right. And I'm not listening because I, I know it right and I did it right. And they don't know any better than I do. So I, I did it right. And um, by the way, acting that way would be actually like your opposite Virgo. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. But you know, just be aware that it, 
you might have to explain something once, explain something twice, explain something thrice. So remember that. And if someone asked you, what did you say? Can you say that again? What was that? Wait a minute. I didn't get that. Wait. Say that one more time. Don't get offended. Okay. Just explain it again. And this time, make sure you're not going, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that episode. I'm going to put a link to that episode. I know it, it's on YouTube somewhere. Peter and Lois singing that song. <gasps> okay. And why do I actually envision some Pisces actually singing? I mean, it is Neptune, right? It is Pisces. So I'm, I'm envisioning some Pisces out there actually singing. I mean, really. And I'm not saying you guys would do that. I'm not saying that. But I just want you to understand that you know not everyone will get you understand you like you guys may not even get me now because i'm silly and i do have some pisces in my first house so you might be like what is that girl talking about the <laughs> same be aware of that you guys and don't take offense to anything not now okay all right well much love and much light to all of you wonderful pisces you know i love you and here's the thing, I want you to take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to my, my channel and make sure you hit the bell so you know when I'm uploading things because I upload a lot of things that, you know, I go and hide after. You guys don't realize that, but I do. I do. So make sure you do that. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this with the free readings at the group because for some reading, I think it's because I made the group private, but I've been having a hard time getting my live readings done there. I really have. And so I'm either going to have to move them to the page, which is simply facebook.com slash astrology look inside. Or, I, you know, I'm going to try again with the group, but I so far, I might see if I can find a streaming service and try it that way. You guys, it's just been a real headache. And I, I feel bad because I don't think I've been able to do a real good Wednesday night live on Facebook and not on YouTube for like three weeks now. And so I just wanted to make sure I apologize, especially to my Pisces. I know I have a lot of Pisces that follow me from the group and I just wanted to let you guys know that okay so anyway this has been Adrian Capricorn Tigress from astrologylookinside.com and if you want to find out all the other things to do and how you can find us you can find it below okay much love and light to you guys Mwah. namaste <laughs>